experimenting you know even halfway through the tour you're still finding out new things you can do with it mm -hmm. and in a way it's early days you know we've done four gigs and that's all so far but it's great working out it's working happening out it's a little bit hot with all those lights i mean you have those, those 64 bars and unbelievably stuff like that. hot it's ridiculous um you drink a lot of water yeah yeah and we have some fans and stuff yeah it is unbelievably hot yeah strangely enough i don't mind that too much i, I don't mind a bit of sweat and atmosphere i prefer that to the the outdoor situation where it sometimes gets very cold mm -hmm. and all the sweat goes away and uh, it's uh, I find that not so easy to deal with and also there's more tuning problems outdoors you know? yeah obviously. but that's what we've geared up for this time and at least uh, you can't exactly get cold underneath those lights you've been together for 16 years now I guess yeah and you know especially on tour don't you like get totally fed up with each other once in a while I, mean, I, hear, I hear the separate rooms help a lot with these things but well yeah, I, mean, I don't want to sleep with them. <laughs> Um, yes, and separate lives to an extent helps. You know, we all have our interests outside the group, and those are like little safety valves. We can get off and do our stuff, and then we come back to the group, and the group is exciting again. What, so, what yeah, we do get on each other's nerves frequently, yeah. but it's not to the point where we don't want to see each other anymore. No. When, when you went to build, to build that guitar, I mean, what did, I mean, you must have put a lot of love into it. I mean, how do you, how do you figure out how you, how, you, how you want to make a guitar that's going to sound the way you want it to sound? Uh, well, we did. It's me and my dad. We, yeah. And uh, I was about 18 years old. I was at school. And we used to, I used to come down, you know, we used to go in this little workshop every night at home and try some experiments and try and figure out what actually did make a difference to the way the guitar sounded. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't afford to buy one at the time. I used to borrow my friends sometimes. And um, we just figured out what we thought was the secret. It's not really grueling, no, it, I, that's a, a falsehood. I think we all look forward to them as a, as a release, because the aims are very simple until you just get out there and do your damnedest with you for the two hours. <laughs> you've been renowned for the, for the videos that you make. Tell me about the new one that you've done for the single Friends Will Be Friends. Um, <laughs> it's a kind of audience participation thing, which is the way the song is. It's one of these anthemic things which we seem to do from time to time. And, um, it's really original. <laughs> yes. Where did you do it? of videos <laughs> being asked about videos. Yeah, they are a bit of a sore point in a way. Cause, and in a sense, you get dragged into them these days. You know, you don't always want to do a video because sometimes it ties down the meaning of the song too much, almost. You know. But um, at the moment, it seems like a good idea because if you don't, you're just cutting off your, your throat because there's so many places that you don't um that you don't have the chance of an exposure one of britain's favorite soap stars has uh, teamed up uh, for her next hit single with uh, a guitarist from one of britain's biggest rock bands queen of course and the combination of anita dobson and brian may looks like going from strength to strength a very good morning to you both good morning thank good morning. you for coming good in this morning it is a strange unlikely partnership isn't it how did this come about it's, uh, well, you've described it very glamorously <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, very good. Um, thank you it's just something that um seemed like a good idea at the time and it may not have worked but as it happens I'm very pleased with how it came out I didn't know that Anita I didn't know how she could sing really I knew how she sounded speaking and I was amazed with that and um, I wrote a song played it to her and said do you want to try it and she said yeah and we went in and did it but the embryo obviously you didn't have the idea before you'd met Anita how did the where was the embryo of the initial idea hatched um, the idea for the song was hatched on tour um, but I'd met Anita down and out in Beverly Hills, actually at a premiere of the film Down and Out in Beverly Hills. But it sounds more glamorous, you see. And, um, and I invited her to the Queen show. We were playing at Wembley at that time. And, um, and she came to the show. And I guess liked it. Did you like it? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, you obviously are now a big fan of Queen, even if you weren't. But I, I would imagine, before. like most of us, you were. Yeah. Yes. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> I took everybody. I'm not <laughs> You hadn't heard of Brian? Well, I'd, I knew who he was, but I. You know how you sort of, you see a group, yes. and you, you know the group and their music, um, but actually meeting him on his own, for the first few seconds it didn't click who he was at all, no. 
And but I took everybody to see the show, my family, you know, sort of all my friends. It was a huge line of us. <laughs> <laughs> I said record promoters dream, the two of you. I'd imagine from your point of view, um, you, you also pursue a, a solo singing career. An absolute <laughs> dream, I would imagine, when Brian suggested, look, I've got a record here, and um, would you like to sing it? Yes, it was. I sort of ran around the room three times and then very calmly said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, had you, always, had you always known you've got a good voice? Well, I'd always sung because I'd done stage shows, musicals. So for about six years of my career, I'd done sort of Thrupani Opera, The Boyfriend, you know, Mahogany, Kurt Vile, all sorts of different things. I'd always sung, but nobody had actually said, would you like to make a record? Um, so not until anyone can fall in love. But this was a completely different ball game. This mm. is sort of, this is the real thing. <laughs> Do you like it now? Enjoy yeah, it, the real been, thing? It's been very exciting, yeah. Mm. It's been quite scary too because, um, with everything I've done before, people sort of tell you the, the character or the way they want you to present it, much the same way you would when you're acting. But um, with this particular record, Brian wanted to find out if I could sing Anita Dobson, what the sound was that I could make, and that's it. <laughs> You've been fairly impressed with the, the voice, strictly the voice, Brian, haven't you? And Anita yes. is a performer there. And, yeah, I wanted to hear... I liked Anyone Can Fall In Love. I thought it's, it's a very nice record. I thought it was well written and everything. But I thought there's something in her speaking voice which doesn't come over on that record. There's, a, there's guts and there's real emotion, and that's what I want to put on that piece of plastic. Mm. And we worked very hard to do it, really. Mm. And now I think Anita has... I mean, it's only the beginning, because we have some great stuff about half made at the moment. We have half an album or so. And she sounds great. I mean, she screams and shouts. She can <laughs> sing ballads. She can do the lot. She's great. <laughs> but it, it is, in a sense, uh, allowing yourself to escape from the press pressures of Queen and working with someone uh, like Anita on another project. Is, is that a relief for you? It's great fun, because I, I feel the lack of my group in a sense, because we, we are taking a break at the moment. We're still together and we talk and we love each other and it's all right. So. <laughs> but um, I need someone to bounce off. I get very fidgety if I'm not creating something. And Anita, I mean, she sings great and that's fine, but the great thing about her really is that she's someone who you can interact with. You know, she has a point of view about everything. She's very experienced in a very different way from the way I'm experienced. And so it's a two-way thing. So we get in the studio and we argue like mad. But something interesting yeah, comes out of it. You're the impression of a right little madam. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, oh well, ah. <laughs> I'm used to it. I'll tell you, I'm used to used to working with madams. Uh, <clears throat> but she she doesn't give me an easy time. She argues as much as the others we put together. So. We were talking a little bit about um, Queen Brian uh, before eight o'clock this morning. Um, you're all doing your own thing at the present time. Are you oh. a frustrated creator? Does the opportunity to work with Anita? give you the chance to get out and do your own thing? I very quickly get frustrated if I don't create, that's true. I can't sit around for very long. We've had a great time with Queen. I mean, I've had people to, to work with and, and, um, and interchange ideas with for a long time. And Anita is, is a new one of those for me. It's great. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And but um, hopefully Queen will be back on the road before too long. You know, so we, if the, we this is not an irrevocable other. split, Queen? No, 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 we're not splitting at all, no. Mm. That's great news, I'm sure, for millions and millions of Queen fans. You have to see the whole thing to get the whole story ah. from it. And the great thing about it was to make a video with someone who can actually act, you know, because you're generally making videos and kind of pretending to be actors or actresses or whatever. And this woman just walked through the whole thing like a dream. And I hope people get the chance to see the whole video soon, folks. <laughs> it's great. But of course, uh, Queen pioneered pop videos, really, didn't they, with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? That was one of the very first things, yeah. It was a very small time thing at the time. It seemed like it at the time, you know. It was, I think we spent £5,000 on the whole thing in just an afternoon's work. Well, that must have been a fortune at the time, though, wasn't it? At the time, it probably seemed like a big investment, yeah. But it was, and we thought it was fun. We didn't realise how far it would go. We didn't realise the, the sort of earth-shattering implications of being able to be seen all around the world, you know, with a vehicle like that, which brought mm. the song to life. Mm. Mm. Uh, Dare we ask uh, how many pennies one might spend on a, on a video these days? It's hard to bring them in for under about... 60,000 quid, I suppose. It's become an industry. You can't step into a place to make them without paying that sort of money. There's a danger, I suppose, that happens, Brian. Is, it? is that what happened to Queen? Is happening at the present time? No, I don't think we got bored, but there comes a time after about 12 years on the road that you think you should take a break, really. But we're still having fun. And strange enough, I think we see more of each other now. We're not actually on the road some of the time. We see quite a lot what, of what are the other guys doing at the moment, then? Roger's just, um, just about finishing a solo album on which I've played on a couple of tracks and it's very good. Uh, Freddie's been working with Madame Caballé of course, you've probably heard about doing opera and it's wonderful. And Deakey is doing secret John Deacon things and nobody really knows, nobody <laughs> ever knows what John is doing but I'm sure he's, he's got something cooking. Mm. And I've been um, 
Good evening, Miss Lady. I would and imagine you know, Brian, you know, that um, obviously not being the front person, in other words, not being the singer, that it's sort of easier for you to lead a fairly, uh, a more anonymous life than, than, than Freddie does. Um, I mean, is that something that you appreciate, or would you actually like to be up there? And... Um, there's a mixture, really. Most of the time I've been very happy to, with the way it's gone, because the people that know me know me for the right reasons. Um, it, it depends how things happen. I mean, Freddie has a lot of the, the limelight. He also has to deal with a lot of the punches, you know, which is very hard. And I've just kind of skimmed along until recently, when I got splattered all over the news. Well, I was just about to ask you, you say people know you for the right reasons. You've been sitting there tentatively all morning expecting us to ask, and of course we've got to. It is strictly a working relationship. Down, 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 down. The question. <laughs> <laughs> the news of the world story, they, if they'd made a better job of it, I might have enjoyed it. But it, it, they just were so wide of the mark. I could write a lot better. How them. wide of the mark, then? You better tell us. Um, they basically got everything wrong, you know, my wife is not storming out, she wasn't even there at the time. Uh, this was in Hollywood, were, was it, when you were recording we were the single? Mm -hmm. right. You have to, with a person like this, you have to go out of the country because the need to get pursued by every kind of, I call them, vermin and various other things. Just people that you don't want to be around, you know, so we got some peace and quiet and made the record. Brian Mason Cree, hello Brian, it's nice to have you with us today. Okay. Yesterday we met the fellow who brought in this uh, new fabulous digital guitar. I've heard which about it and I know what it is, yes, I haven't actually held it in my hand. It cost thousands and thousands to make and to, and to buy. Yeah. Uh, you brought us in a guitar which actually cost a lot less to, uh, to guitar, make. Yeah. It cost me eight pounds to make that 20 years ago with my father. You actually made it, didn't you? Yeah, and it's uh, this old but antique is still going, that's what I play. The whole time. Well, how do you go about actually making a guitar? I mean, it looks quite a complicated thing to build. It took us about two years. It's built literally from more or less junk, you know, bits of old fireplaces. And stuff. <laughs> there's, there's all books about it. That's but it's, it's somehow still going. It was only built for fun, really, but it's, it's lasted the 20 years that I've been I mean, it is the thing that makes the very distinctive Queen sound, isn't it? It helps. Can we hear a bit? Ah! I you'd never ask. It buzzes a bit because of these lights. <laughs> Sorry. That's fantastic. <laughs> now, what about this, uh, you know, the, the digital thing? Have you, you've not seen that yet, have you? No, I haven't, but I've, I've played around with a few digital guitars. I don't generally like them. I hear that this one that you were trying out is great, mm. but um, I'm hoping they're going to send me one and I can try it out. It'd be nice, that, wouldn't it? But for me, the traditional, I like the way the guitar sounds anyway, and to me, it's kind of a voice, and this thing does, it speaks for me, because I'm not a very good singer. But it does have that very distinctive sound. It's a beautiful thing, yeah. and very nice that, you know, you... <laughs> stuff makes silly noises too. It's a late night sound, isn't it? It sounds quite strange to hear it in the morning. I know, this is late night for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very late night for me. That's great. Well, uh, I go now. No, no, you, no. Can, hear, you can hear more of this on, uh, on Saturday because there's a very special um, simulcast going out. On That's right, which is history making. It's the first time the independents have done a, a right. simulcast. Yeah, Saturday night. Which actually features yourselves in concert. Yes, from one of our Wembley Stadium concerts last last month or a couple of months ago. It's quite a spectacular uh, set of concerts. That I mean, I know when they uh, when they filmed it, they used um, a record breaking fifteen cameras or something on the actual shoot. And yeah, it's very well shot, I think. And if you're going to listen to it, what I recommend is get the biggest telly you can find and sit about this far from it and put headphones on. Don't <laughs> don't listen to the mono sound. The stereo sound is the, great. The, the biggest the headphones you can get as well. Kind of iffy. Good lord, is that me? Right. <laughs> but uh, the other thing is, that, of course, uh, the money um, the money from part of those concerts is going to a very special um, cause which um, Queen have, have been involved with for a little time. We gave away uh, the money from one of the concerts to Save the Children, yes, and I went to uh, one of their meetings yesterday and met Princess Anne, who was very wonderful and a big inspiration because she works on this thing the whole time. And Save the Children, in contrast to Live Aid, is something which just goes on the whole time without a whole lot of fanfares, you know. And they're fantastic people, very unpushy, and just get on with the job. Not only in Africa and all that, but in this country too, you know, very worthy projects here. So I was very happy to... It's a sort of continuing relationship we have with them now. You wrote a song um, a, a for children, didn't you, which was a, a special song. I remember you doing it at Live Aid. We did Is This the World We Created? Yeah, yeah which, which goes back a, a couple of years, actually, to mm. when we first saw the news from Africa. Mm. You know, that, so that, was, that sort of predates Live Aid, really. Yeah, so every time that gets played or that gets bought, then some money goes to save the children too. That's that's a very uh, very worthwhile and uh, good. Thank you for coming and joining us today, Brian. Yeah, Thank you.
spent too much time on it and we, re we refined it. We actually sort of threw out all the other stuff which wasn't in that mood. Mm -hmm. And it became too much in one, like you say, one dimensional. And also we got involved with um, thinking about machines and various kinds of things. So that theme is carried through on the album cover as well, sort of gears and the works of a machine. And uh, there is one other meaning we, which we didn't realize at the time, I think, I don't think which is, it's like um, the works of Johann Sebastian Bach means sort of the summary of all the stuff you've done. And it's a lot of people see it as that kind of album as well. We asked how their solo work and Freddie Mercury's upcoming album affect the status of the band. We have a positive attitude towards all of us doing things outside because we all need our releases. We all have our, we all think Queen is a very worthwhile thing, but we all have our frustrations in in making the compromises that we have to make to keep together. If you had the chance to meet anyone that's, uh, who's ever lived in history, right, and to speak with them, who would it be, and what do you think you would like to converse about? Who? Oh. <laughs> Duh. If I could speak Italian, I'd like to meet Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, of 